as it's loading, is you're going to be creating a crazy graffiti breakout wall and adding like your own embellishments to the wall. Um, and it's a really fun like drawing practice or drawing like assignment with like, again, your own added embellishments and it's all about graffiti, but that's where we're moving, like where we're moving um, for our final project. You kind of have two final projects. It's this drawing and then your name one as well um, that you're working on. So that's the direction we're going just so if some of you are like, well, what are we even doing? That's what we're doing. Okay. We're headed that way. Um, today we do have a discussion. Perfect. And then do remember that I, Friday will be work time as well. So make sure you take yeah. stuff home that you need. Um, the, the information I'm going to share with you now is in the graffiti discussion in Wednesday's folder. And this discussion is due today. And I have a couple of things. I'm not going to show you all three videos. So I'll change. I'm going to show you one. And then we are going to go over graffiti after that. So I'm going to show you as I get through here. I'm going to show you more work here in a second. We're going to look at the history right here, the history of graffiti. Um, cause it's kind of interesting where, where it even comes from. So I'm going to show you this quickly and then go through some more information and then y'all can do your discussion and then you have work time. So I'm going to mute myself here. Spray painted subway cars, tagged bridges, mural covered walls, Graffiti pops up boldly throughout our cities. It can make statements about identity, art, empowerment, and politics, while simultaneously being associated with destruction. And, it turns out, it's nothing new. Graffiti, or the act of writing or scribbling on public property, has been around for thousands of years. And across that span of time, it's raised the same questions we debate now. Is it art? Is it vandalism? In the first century BCE, Romans regularly inscribed messages on public walls, while oceans away, Mayans were prolifically scratching drawings onto their surfaces. And it wasn't always a subversive act. In Pompeii, ordinary citizens regularly marked public walls with magic spells, prose about unrequited love, political campaign slogans, and even messages to champion their favorite gladiators. Some, including the Greek philosopher Plutarch, pushed back, deeming graffiti ridiculous and pointless. But it wasn't until the fifth century that the roots of the modern concept of vandalism were planted. At that time, a barbaric tribe known as the Vandals swept through Rome, pillaging and destroying the city. But it wasn't until centuries later that the term vandalism was actually coined in an outcry against the defacing of art during the French Revolution. And as graffiti became increasingly associated with deliberate rebellion and provocativeness, it took on its vandalist label. That's part of the reason why today, many graffiti artists stay underground. Some assume alternate identities to avoid retribution, while others do so to establish camaraderie and make claim to territory. Beginning with the tags of the 1960s, a novel overlap of celebrity and anonymity hit the streets of New York City and Philadelphia. Taggers used coded labels to trace their movements around cities while often alluding to their origins. And the very illegality of graffiti making that forced it into the shadows also added to its intrigue and growing base of followers. The question of space and ownership is central to graffiti's history. Its contemporary evolution has gone hand in hand with counterculture scenes. While these movements raised their anti-establishment voices, graffiti artists likewise challenged established boundaries of public property. They reclaimed subway cars, billboards, and even once went so far as to paint an elephant in the city zoo. Political movements, too, have used wall writing to visually spread their messages. During World War II, both the Nazi party and resistance groups covered walls with propaganda. And the Berlin Wall's one-sided graffiti can be seen as a striking symbol of repression versus relatively unrestricted public access. 
As the counterculture movements associated with graffiti become mainstream, does graffiti too become accepted? Since the creation of so-called graffiti unions in the 1970s and the admission of select graffiti artists into art galleries a decade later, graffiti has straddled the line between being outside and inside the mainstream. And the appropriation of graffiti styles by marketers and typographers has made this definition even more unclear. The once unlikely partnerships of graffiti artists with traditional museums and brands have brought these artists out of the underground and into the spotlight. Although graffiti is linked to destruction, it's also a medium of unrestricted artistic expression. Today, the debate about the boundary between defacing and beautifying continues. Meanwhile, graffiti artists challenge common consensus about the value of art and the degree to which any space can be owned. Whether spraying, scrawling, or scratching, graffiti brings these questions of ownership, art, and acceptability to the surface. So that dives in pretty like in depth about graffiti and where it comes and the word vandalism and vandals. Um, like I was telling you before, I am quite obsessed with graffiti. Um, it is one of my absolute favorite mediums of art. And the kind of cool thing about it is it's known as a lot of different things. So you might hear words like graffiti, slap art, um, a lot of times slap art means um, like slapping it on the wall, yarn bombing, tagging, ad busting, sticker bombing, brandalism, artivism, and street art. These are all words that are all in the same genre as graffiti. Um, tagging is going to be the one that is 99.9% .9 of the time associated with um, illegal and gang affiliation because a lot of times they have a like they tag something. However, if you ever hear someone say, oh, what is your tag? A lot of graffiti artists go by different names. And so that's, that is also another word. If you're like, what is tag? Like your tag is, is your other name um, in the graffiti world. Um, do you guys remember doing, was it last year or the year before? You know, on the, the back wall when we did, um, everybody got part of the, of the rhombus and they, they designed them from the, the artist Thank You X. Do you guys remember doing that in an advisory? And it's behind you on the back wall. And we made the cubes. That artist is Thank You X, but that is not his real name. Um, I actually met him on the corner of a street in Chicago, which was really cool. Um, but that's like that's how he what he goes by in the art world is Thank You X. This is Jean Michel Basquiat. I've talked about him a couple of times, and he is he's con considered kind of like one of the main graffiti artists here in the U.S. Um, he is French, but he was he was um, in Philly, and he was the one who kind of originally started painting underneath, like the underpasses, and doing a lot of work that was um, very political. His work was known as being childlike, as you can kind of see. Um, he did a lot of characters, but he did a lot of like political work, and his stuff was absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, he passed away um, in the '80s, but not without leaving his mark in the art world. This is actually one of his pieces that they cut off a wall and they framed it. This is in a gallery in New York City. This had a price tag, I believe, of like $1.2 million on it for this chunk of wall of Basquiat's. Um, this is his famous gold crown. He has that in most of his paintings. Um, and so if you ever see, and like behind you, I have a, um, an art decal up on the wall by the back door. That is a Basquiat saying, and then has his, his crown. Um, he is, I, I, he's one of my faves. Here he is. Um, there is a graffiti artist who was hired. So is this legal or illegal? If this person was hired to do this. They're mumbling legal. Thank you. It is legal. Um, this is in New York City, and you can see this black fence in front of the work because the building owner is like asking people who are street artists, like, please leave my wall alone. Um, this is something I asked to be put here. And this is Basquiat, um, and it's a it's a tribute to him. And you can see gloves here. This is Andy Warhol over here. So Basquiat and Andy Warhol had a real boxing match in the 70s um, at a boxing club in New York City because they they were like totally like real frenemies and they decided to like duke it out for real in the boxing ring. And so this was kind of like paying homage to that, but it's a beautiful work. And if you've ever parked in downtown Minneapolis, um, there is a huge painting in one of the parking lots that has Bob Dylan. And that's from the same artist as this one. So if anyone has seen that downtown 
um, with all the crazy triangles, that's the same artist. Here's Pyramid Oracle, and he's a big up and coming artist in New York City. And my husband and I actually commissioned him. So we we hired him to create a painting of graffiti piece for us for our house, um, which was really awesome of him to do that. And his work is phenomenal. Um, this is actually a picture. My daughter turns 18 tomorrow, but this is her when she was 14. And she I snapped this because she was super grumpy, but then it's kind of funny because behind her was a Pyramid Oracle piece. And so she was so over graffiti at this point. We probably drug around like six hours of graffiti walks after like at this point. She's like, can we be done now? But this piece was behind her and I didn't even notice it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, BK Fox is a female graffiti artist, which is not super common. Um, typically the graffiti in the graffiti world, it is male. And so this one is really cool. And her like if kind of perspective, this is the ground and this is the top of the building. So if you can see how large this piece is, and it's all done in spray paint, like freehand spray paint. I, I just, I don't even know how she does it. Like, I don't understand it. It's like the, so beautiful, um, but she's a realist when it comes to creating artwork that it looks realistic and her work is amazing. Here's sack six. Now I like to, whoops, I like to show this one because it is called wheat pasting. So like I told you, a lot of graffiti work is illegal and you can get a vandalism charge, which is really expensive. And you actually can go to prison for vandalism. Um, so a lot of artists create wheat paste. So what they do is they create this work in their studio and they bring it out and then they literally use like wallpaper paste and, pa and paste it to the wall because if they get caught, it's a littering charge. So it's like a $50 fine versus prison time. Um, it's easily removable and it doesn't ruin anything. So a lot of artists do this. And this particular um, cafe here in, in Brooklyn loves that ha this work is here because this artist is very sought after and people um, like search out their work. So it brings customers to their cafe like with that, for free advertisement essentially. So a lot of places love that because they're like, sweet, put it on our wall. Um, same with Space Invader. Have, have any, even, any of you heard of Space Invader or seen his work? He's pretty popular in the video game world um, because he is all pixelated. Does any, I can't see or hear if anyone has seen him before or he's seen his work. Uh, one person. One person. His stuff is all over the world. And he does, um, like I said, all pixelated. So he uses glass tile. And again, his work is virtually priceless. But if you take it off the wall, it is worth nothing. So it's it's this weird world of like, how do you price art? Um, these are pictures I've taken of Space Invader work in Paris and New York. He has work all over Paris and all over France. His, his stuff is crazy. He even has an app. Like you can like take pictures on the app and win prizes. It's crazy. Here's another wheat pasting kind of to show you that it's kind of all over. This is where people use sculptural things and it can ruin pavement. Um, both of these had permission. Uh, I love this one where it just kind of adds a beautiful, just beautifies things, you know, in nature. This is a painted dumpster kind of just shows you a lot of neighborhoods love when people come in and beautify or add art to the neighborhood. Here's chalk art is the safest form of graffiti there is. Um, it's washes off with water. So it's super simple. doesn't ruin anything. Um, and chalk art is not easy, but it's really beautiful. Here's yarn bombing. So a lot of places you'll see yarn bombing. You'll see it in cities a lot. You'll see it on trees, um, in industrial areas, all over Denver. Um, Minneapolis has a ton. It, again, doesn't hurt anything. It's easy to remove. Um, but people love to yarn bomb. And it's just like you can kind of see it's pretty industrial back here. So it just adds like some beautifying and color to an area um, without ruining anything. So it's another one. Here's Banksy. He is probably the most famous street artist, graffiti artist. He um, is masked, so no one knows who he truly is. Um, he was uh, nominated for an Oscar a few years ago for his documentary through the, um, I think it was called Through the Looking Glass. And everyone was hoping he'd show up to the Oscars, but he didn't. Um, and he has like a voice, um, like over voice on the documentary, so you can't even really hear his real voice. But this is his work, and he is a stencil artist mostly, which means he creates his stencils in the studio, takes them out and sprays them on the wall, removes them and leaves. So you can kind of see where things start to bleed a little bit once he removes the stencils. But that's he's mainly a stencil artist, and he's very political, and his stuff shows up in a lot of places that that is very political. 
watched that already. So that is kind of, well, well, I'll show you a few other things later on this week and next week, but that's like really the breakdown of graffiti. Like, what is it? Where does it come from? You know, people used it for many reasons, for political reasons, to leave a mark. Um, your job now is for the discussion, which I'm in Wednesday's folder, is there's a couple answers or questions here. Um, kind of just like, now that you've learned about the history of graffiti, where it comes from, is all graffiti legal or connected to gang activity? Like, can it be art? Why or why not? Now, number two is more your opinion. Like you tell me, like, do you think it's art? Do you think it's vandalism? Do you think it ruins things? And then how can it be done legally? Because I want to make, you know, really want to hone in on that, that it's really important to understand that there's there's a difference. Um, so this is due today. So if you guys could just take a few minutes and complete your discussion. Tomorrow, I will go over talking about shading and that sort of thing. And then you'll have work time the rest of this week before we go into our final project. Does anyone have any questions right now about expectations, about the graffiti words, your name? Is everybody good?